Well, good morning. Well, what's left of it in central time anyway. Welcome to Zoom session number four in 110 Acoustics, Psychoacoustics. Today and next week, we will cover Unit 2. So if you haven't printed up your notes for Unit 2, Intensity and the Decibel, do so now. Like, just pause this Zoom session, print it up, and come back just like we did with unit one. It's a really good idea to have your, your notes printed up and sitting right beside you as you go through this one hour Zoom session that we do every week. So today, unit two, intensity and the decibel from hell, okay? Now, remember, sound takes place in two dimensions. No, I should say three, okay? Frequency, intensity, and time. So for the last three weeks, we've looked at frequency. We talk about wavelength and speed of sound and period and all of that jazz, resonance. Now let's go to uh, dimension number two, intensity. Just so you know, we don't really cover uh, the third thing so much time. I mean, that's just basically that works through, it's woven through both frequency and intensity. So basically we're looking really at intensity, amplitude. Okay, not the frequency so much now, the amplitude. Remember, all frequencies travel the same speed through air, blah, 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 blah. But it's time to cover amplitude of sound and how we measure it. And we measure it by means of the decibel. So without any further ado, let's go and take a look at our notes. I will share a screen here and we will go to the notes and the PowerPoint. So there's my little shot of Iceland. Here would be the notes. Huh. intensity, decibels, power, and pressure. Let's look a little bit closer at that. So I'll make this just a little bit bigger, all right, and bring it in. You can see your readings for this one in Lass and Woodford, chapter one, pages 36 through 41. Now, one and two here, in physical, not psychoacoustic. Now, psychoacoustics means perception, okay? just. In physical terms, just like we looked at last week in physics, in acoustics, intensity is completely independent from frequency. On a waveform, intensity is represented as the height. You remember what a waveform is. It's the where you had time on the horizontal and amplitude on the vertical. So on sound waves, intensity is the height, the tallness. Hello, we got ourselves a joiner. All righty. Good stuff, Nicole. How are you? I'm sick, but good. <laughs> okay, sorry to hear that. We mm -hmm. just started. You haven't missed much. I've just been blabbing, just kind of introducing Unit 2. Okay. And I just encourage people to print up their notes for Unit 2, which is the decibel. Intensity, you got. You're good. All right. Why? Because she's Nicole. That's why. All right. So what we'll talk about here is... Intensity being measured in dB, and that's always little d, big B. I didn't make it up, but that's just what they do. And first, we'll look at some terms related to intensity, and I'll show you some PowerPoint slides as well. Let's see what we got here in terms of slides. Ooh, some weird-looking slides. Yikes. Let me just show you this weird one with the mouse and the elephant here, just for the sheer heck of it. Okay, we'll pull up this guy here, make it bigger. Have a look at this. The softest sound you can hear is real soft, and the loudest you can tolerate is like five elephants. So when you are looking at that range, the weight of a mouse compared to the weight of five elephants. You're talking a lot of difference, right? And that's why I, when I were, one of the fundamental things about the decibel is that it's got to cover this monstrous range. And I'll stop sharing here. It's got to cover this monstrous range from the softest you can just barely hear to the loudest sound you can tolerate. That range in loudness or in, in intensity is monstrously huge. Hello, we got ourselves another joiner. Good stuff. Good to see you. Okay, just started unit two on the decibel from hell. Always a good idea to have our notes printed up ahead of time like we do. And uh, we'll just kind of march on through this and talk about it bit by bit. We've got this week and next week to cover it.
There's certain things in the notes one can concentrate on, and there's other stuff in the notes that you can kind of, eh, well, I'll tell you what those are as we move through. So share screen here, take a look at our notes, and basically I think this slide is kind of the centerpiece. The range of intensity that we can hear is huge. You know, when you're the softest sound you can barely hear, move your eardrum about the width of a hydrogen atom. I mean, not much. So that, that the softest we can hear is real soft, and we'll talk about that in the notes. So first, let's get some terms. Force, energy, blah, blah. Measured in units of dynes, Newton, Pascals, blah, blah, whatever, but circle dynes because that's the one we're going to look at, okay? And then you look at the next uh, word here, and it says pressure. Now, for pressure, I'm going to stop sharing here, and let's do this together. Pressure is force over an area. So put your hand against your face and press real hard against your hand. Now, when you do that, there's not much pressure. You, forced, you had a lot of force over a big area called your hand. But now, if you put your finger against your cheek, now push real hard. It hurts, doesn't it? See, pressure is force over an area. So the smaller the area, the greater that force is. If you've got that force sitting over a big area like your hand, not much pressure. But if you have that lot of force against a small area, big time pressure. That's why you have a middle ear, by the way. Are both of you taking anatomy class? If you're taking 120, that's why you have a middle ear. Because sound hits your eardrum, which is relatively big, and then that, that pressure gets converged onto a point called your stapes bone, the last bone of your middle ear. And that's how airborne sound gets increased in pressure. So that airborne sound can activate a fluid-filled inner ear. Because if you have your head under a swimming pool, and I'm talking to you from the edge of the pool, you're not going to hear me because your head's underwater, right? All the sound is going to bounce right off the water. The same would happen if airborne sound was to hit the fluid-filled inner ear. So why do you have a middle ear? Because your eardrum is big, and all that pressure is converged onto a, to a point called your stirrup or stapes bone. And pressure is therefore increased. Think of it this way. If you have, you're laying on your back watching TV, and I'm your roommate, and I walk up to you and I put a cinder block on your tummy, you're going to go, oh, get that off of me. But if I have a nail on the bottom of that cinder block, you're dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, think, I know it's gross, but think of how a knife cuts through bread. The force of your arm is converged onto a thin, 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 thin strip called your knife. That's how it cuts. Pressure is force over an area, okay? And your ear works like a pressure device because your eardrum receives sound. So what we do is we measure what's the pressure of that sound hitting your eardrum, and we're going to call that decibels. So we have to, we've got the pressure of sound hitting your eardrum because your ear works like a pressure device. It receives sound, just like a microphone receives the sound of your voice, okay? So back to our notes and look at that where we continued from the word pressure. Pressure is force over an area. Put a star by that puppy, okay? Now, I don't care if you're looking at the atmospheric pressure is 14.7 pounds per square inch, blah, blah, blah. But pressure is measured in units of dynes or pascals or newtons, but it's always force over an area, right? So it's going to be called dynes. We're going to pick on dynes. That's one we're going to use. Dynes per square centimeter. And remember, a centimeter is about as big as your fingernail. Okay, so per square centimeter, so for, since pressure is force over an area, pressure in sound is called dynes per centimeter squared, force over an area. Good. Now look at the next word where it says power here. Okay, now some people measure sound in terms of its power, not its pressure, its power. Hmm, 
Okay, let's talk about that. What the heck is power? Power is work done. Work done. Instead of pressure received, it's work done. And that's measured in units of watts per centimeter squared. Think of a light bulb. How many, how many watts is it? Is a 60 watt bulb, 100 watt bulb? Watts is a measurement, is a unit of power. Dines is a unit of pressure. Both ways are used to measure sound intensity, but we choose pressure. You know why? Because we're hearing instrument specialists and we talk about the ear and the ear receives sound. So the ear works more like a pressure device. Power is like work done, you know, so the ear doesn't make work, the ear receives sound. All right, and you can work watts represents unit per blah, 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 blah. I don't care about that. What I need you to put a star by is when you're talking power, What's the unit of power? Watts per centimeter squared. What's the unit of pressure? Dines per centimeter squared. Get it, got it, good. Very, very good. Now, let's go down to the next paragraph. And I'll highlight here what you should know and what you shouldn't know. There's excess stuff in here, stuff for nerds only, FNO, and stuff or freak not out. And there's stuff in here that you should know. So here we go. Power. So we'll get power out of the way. We're going we're gonna to deal with this guy, and then we'll sweep it under the rug, and we'll talk pressure. So first, let's talk power. Power looks at what was produced, as in work done. Now, don't worry about joules, one joule, blah, 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 blah. Screw it. Forget it. The unit for sound power is watts per centimeter squared. Remember that. Now let's talk about the smallest power required for, look at the sentence I'm highlighting here. The smallest power required for a human being with normal hearing to hear a 1,000 hertz tone at one meter distance with two ears. Look at that sentence carefully. A guy is sitting in front of a speaker, one yard away from a speaker, and he's listening with both ears to a tone. And I'll stop sharing so we can just see this for a second. So I'm sitting in front of a speaker. I got a, here's a speaker, and it's one, one meter away from my face. And what tone is coming out of it? 1,000 hertz. Not 2,000, not four, one. Okay, why? We just pick on it. Why? Flip a coin. 1,000. Okay. Why? Because it's nicely in the middle, and it's a nice round number. So we're listening to 1,000 hertz at one meter distance from a speaker with two ears. And you're listening. What was the smallest power required for a normal hearing person to just barely hear that? And they write that down, and let's figure out what that was. What do the notes say? Good grief. Look at this. The smallest is 10 to the minus 16. Mm, what the Sam Hill is that? Let's talk about it. That's a one with 15 zeros in front of it. Huh, that's like point zero 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 comma zero 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 comma zero 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 comma blah 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 blah. You know what I mean? 15 zeros in front of the one. That's tiny. That's like some iota, some little speck. And then what's the largest? sound we can tolerate. What is the, before I freak out and say, ouch, now we're turning up the volume, turning up the volume, cranking it up, cranking it up, until finally it reaches a level that you're going, ah, I can't take it anymore, stop. Okay, what was that? Let's measure what the power of that was. And you look at it, and that's 10 to the minus four. 10 to the minus four. Huh, that's a one with three zeros in front of it. Okay, so the smallest it took to hear, a, to just barely hear it, was a one with 15 zeros in front of it, You're like point zero 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 blah, 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 blah. And the loudest sound power we could tolerate was point zero 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 one watts per centimeter squared. That's 10 to the minus four. So what's the difference between those two? What is the difference between 10 to the minus 16 and 10 to the minus 4? 
Well, the good thing is we don't have to deal with this. Let's keep it simple. It's 10 to the 12. 10 to the minus 16 compared to 10 to the minus 4, which is the loudest, the strongest, the difference is 10 to the 12th. In English, this simply means a 1 with 12 zeros after it. So let's do our thing. 1 with 3 zeros after it is a 1,000. A 1 with 6 zeros after it is a million. A one with nine zeros after it is a billion. A one with 12 zeros after it is a trillion. So what's the loudest sound we can tolerate? It has a trillion times as much power as the softest sound we can just barely hear. Do you know what I mean now by the mouse and the elephants? Okay, the softest we can hear is so much smaller than the loudest we can tolerate. Or put it this way, the loudest we can tolerate is so much more than the softest we can just barely hear. So, what's the loudest power we can hear? A trillion times as much as the softest power we can hear. Hmm, all right. Next, let's go look at pressure. Check it out. So, when, you, when I ask people to put in your notes here, put a star by this puppy. The range of our hearing in power units is a trillion to one. And look where it's grayed out there, a one with 12 zeros after it, right there, okay? Count on that kind of ki question being on a quiz. That's the kind of thing that I do. I'll say, power is measured in what? And you should say watts per centimeter squared. And I'll say, how big is the biggest power you can tolerate compared to the softest power you can just barely hear? And you'll say a trillion to one. Good. You can write it down as in the word trillion or put a one with 15 zeros. Doesn't matter. All right, same thing. Now, sound pressure level. Let's talk about pressure because that's the other way that you can measure sound intensity. So here we go. Pressure looks at what is received on a diaphragm, like a microphone, like your eardrum. And the common unit for sound pressure, it says here, is dynes per centimeter squared. Now, all of this stuff here, blah, 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 that's exactly that, blah, blah. Don't worry about it. I don't care, because you just leave that alone. And then this stuff here, blah, 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 da, da, da. That's just for some, you know, people who want to know that, but I'm never going to ask you that because if someone asked me that stuff, I'd have to look at my notes and see what the, what the heck I wrote, okay? This is what you've got to put a star by. What's the reference for sound intensity? Okay, now I'm going to stop sharing and look at you here. If you want to say, that an apartment building is twice as tall as a house, you got to know where the ground is, don't you? Okay, you have to define the ground. To say something is twice as tall as something else, you got to know what the ground is, and it's the same thing with sound. If we want to say, oh, some sound is a trillion times more pressure than the softest you can hear, you have to call something the ground, and here's what they did. What's the softest pressure it took for normal hearing people to hear a 1,000 hertz tone at one meter distance from a speaker with two ears? Same thing as the power, okay, same. They call that zero. That have to, they have to call that the ground. So they call that zero sound pressure level. The softest pressure it took for a normal hearing, be, hearing human to hear a 1,000 hertz tone at one meter distance from a speaker with two ears. And what was that softest pressure? Mm, let's define it. What was it? They called it 0. 0.0002 dynes per centimeter squared. That's the softest pressure against the drum required for a normal hearing human to hear a 1,000 hertz tone at one meter distance from a speaker with two ears. That's the ground. And how much pressure was that? 0. 0.0002 dynes per centimeter squared. Okay, that's the anchor. That's the ground. Okay. 
remember that. Let's go to our notes and where is it written in our notes? Exactly there. Let's take a peek see at that. The reference for sound intensity, the smallest pressure or power required for a human to hear a 1000 hertz tone at one meter distance from a speaker with two ears. In terms of pressure, this is 0 0.0002 dynes per centimeter squared. And remember earlier we said in power, that's 10 to the minus 16 watts per centimeter squared. Okay, either one, one's power, one's pressure. We prefer pressure. Now let's talk, let's stay with pressure. What's the largest sound pressure that we can tolerate before it hurts? So I'll stop sharing here. Softest you could, the softest it took, 0 0.0002 dynes per centimeter squared. Now crank up the volume, crank up the volume, make it louder, make it louder until it, <clears throat> it hurts. Stop. What was that pressure? 200 dynes per centimeter squared. 200. Hmm. 200. So one is, I'm going to show you here, 0 0.002, and the other one is 200. Now I'll hold this, this paper right here if you can see that. 0 0.0002 and 200. How many times did I have to move the decimal over in order to get to 200? You see, if I make this 0 0.002, I've increased things by 10. If I put my decimal here, I've increased it by 100. If I move my decimal here, it's a 1,000 times. If I move my decimal here and make it 2, I've gone 10,000 times. If I make it 20, it's 100,000 times. And if I make it 200 like this, I've got a million times. So 200 is a million times bigger than 0 0.0002. And that's just simple good old arithmetic like we've all had in high school. So basically, if you're looking at pressure, the range in terms of pressure, it's a million to one. So here you go. The largest pressure you could tolerate was 200 dynes per centimeter squared. So 200 dynes per centimeter squared is a million times bigger than 0 0.0002. So the range of our hearing in pressure units is a million to one. And look what it says in italics here. Hearing science and audiology uses pressure over power. We, get, we don't want to use power because the ear works like a pressure device, like a microphone. It receives sound waves. And pressure, force over an area, is also easier to calculate than power. Okay, now before we go anywhere else, let me show you a picture of two thermometers. Okay, I'll share a screen here and I'll show you a picture of two thermometers here. Share screen, we'll go here and we'll pull up this PowerPoint slide and we're going to go to this guy right here. And this is a nice little shot because it's all about heh, the way we tell temperature in the United States versus Canada. Look at two thermometers. We'll call one power and one pressure, okay? Because if you're thinking to yourself, this is weird. The range of sound intensity uh, in terms of power is a trillion to one. And in terms of pressure, it's only a million to one. Well, that's kind of weird. How, how can you have one's a trillion to one and one's a million to one? How come the softest power versus the loudest power that's a, that's a trillion times as much as the softest power. And then when we go to pressure, the softest pressure versus the loudest pressure is only a million to one. Now what the, que pasa? What's happening there? Well, let's look at two thermometers. Okay, one's Celsius and the other one's Fahrenheit. Now, south of the border where you are in the United States, Okay, let's look at the right-hand thermometer. This is how Americans tell temperature, okay? Water freezes at what? Let's look at we'll see my, my, where my uh, cursor is. 32 degrees. That's freezing, okay? Now, what's, the what's boiling in the United States? Up, 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 212, 
okay? So call freezing the softest sound you can hear and call boiling the loudest sound you can tolerate, okay? So look at the difference between water boiling and water freezing. You see that range? That's the big range, okay? Now if you look at the left, you'll look at how the rest of the world tells temperature. In Canada, we used to use Fahrenheit. We don't anymore. And in Europe, they used to use Fahrenheit. They don't anymore. The rest of the world is on Celsius. And look where water freezes on the left thermometer. We call that zero. And look where water boils in Celsius, 100. Kind of makes more sense, doesn't it? Zero and 100, boiling and freezing. But at any rate, look at the distance from freezing to boiling. That didn't change. If I'm standing in front of a stove in Springfield, Missouri, and I'm boiling water, that water is no hotter than water is in Canada when I put a, a pan on a stove and I make it boil. Boiling is boiling is boiling. And ice freezing over is freezing is freezing. So nothing changes that way. The range between boiling and freezing didn't change. What changed was the unit used to measure it. Do you get it? In Fahrenheit, look at the degrees. They're smaller. They're way smaller. They're, they're, they're way tighter together. Whereas in Celsius, the degrees are a little bit bigger. Okay? And so you've got larger degrees. And that is why you should call Fahrenheit here, make that like your power. Okay? Call that power. Just as, this is just an analogy. It's just something to... So when you're looking at sound in terms of its power, the greatest you can tolerate is 10 to the minus 4. Look what I'm circling here. And the softest you can just barely hear is 10 to the minus 16. And so you've got 10 to the 12 difference. Look where my cursor is at the bottom. And what is 10 to the 12? It's a trillion. That's a trillion. Count the zeros. Okay, now go to the left side. And see the arrows here from boiling to freezing? And the freezing we called in terms of pressure 0 0.0002 dynes per centimeter squared, where I'm circling here. And the loudest you could tolerate, 200. So there, 200 dynes per centimeter squared is 10 to the 6 larger. Not 10 to the 12, 10 to the 6 larger. And what is 10 to the 6? A million. Count the zeros. So the real range didn't change, my fine feathered friends, okay? The range between the softest it took to hear and the loudest it took to tolerate, that didn't change. It's just the thermometer used to measure that range, okay? One was power, one was pressure. Good. Now follow me into our typed notes and look carefully here at the notes. All right. I got to get out of that, move to the notes. Here we go. We're moving down page one. The range of human hearing for intensity is huge. Okay, so we use a ratio system based on logarithms. I'll read that again. The range of human hearing is huge, whether it's pressure or whether it's power, it's huge, as you saw the mouse and the elephants. So we use a ratio system based on logarithms. Now, all yawning aside, we got to make sure we get this. So I'm going to show you a picture of this. I know Nicole's laughing at me. So I'm going to show you a picture here of what I mean, okay? So let's look at the picture. All right, I'm going to show you a picture that talks about that ratio system. Because the range of hearing is so darn big, we've got to use what they call logarithms. And I'm not a math teacher, and I'm not going to expect you to do the same thing. I just want you to get the general gist, the general concept. And here we go. Stop sharing. Go to my PowerPoint slides and show you the, the central slide of concern here. There, I'm going to blow it up and make it large. Here we go. Dines per centimeter squared is the horizontal axis. Look at my cursor from left to right. 
And C.0002 here on the slide, where I'm circling, that's the softest pressure required for a normal hearing human to hear the 1000 hertz tone at one meter distance from a speaker with two ears. Okay, so that's the left corner. And what do we call that? Zero decibels SPL. Okay, that's our ground. That's our, so that I can say an apartment is twice as tall as a house, I've got to know where the ground is. So that's our ground zero. So what is the softest pressure required to just barely hear a tone? 0. 0.0002 dynes per centimeter squared against your eardrum. Okay, we're going to call that zero decibels SPL. Look where I'm circling here. Now, if I increased the pressure by a factor of 10, so if I had that soft, tiny pressure and I made it 10 times as much, what am I doing with that decimal? I'm moving it over one. So now I'm at 0 0.002. 0 0.002 is 10 times as much as 0 0.0002. You get it? All right. And what are we calling that? in decibels, 20. Now let's say I take that 0 0.002 and I increase it by a factor of 10, now I'm at 0 0.02. All right, what is that? Move follow my cursor, 40 decibels, 40 de decibels. So how much bigger is 0 0.02 compared to 0 0.0002? Well, 0 0.02 is 100 times more, isn't it? 0 0.002 is 10 times more, and then I increase it by another tenfold, I'm up at 0 0.02. So 0 0.02 has 100 times the pressure of 0 0.0002. And now, if, let's say if I take 0 0.02 and I increase that by a factor of 10, I'm at 0.2. And I increase that by a factor of 10, no, I'm at two point, and increase that by a factor of 10. Now I'm at 20, and 20 times 10 is 200. You get it? So 200 is a million times bigger than 0 .0002. And look what it is in decibels. Follow my cursor, it's 120. And that's my point here. I'm using logarithms, I'm going, times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10, and I'm using that system so that I can call the entire range of hearing intensity from zero to 120. See, now I can deal with a hearing test, because now I've compressed things. I've taken a million to one, and I've shrunk it down to 120. And that's why we do this. If I go to one slide earlier here, let's see what, uh, what your book says. This is a picture out of your textbook. So here's, here's your logarithms. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is a million. Okay, so that's explaining what this picture is showing you here. This is the idea. So that's why we say the decibel is based on logarithms. So why do we do that? Because the range of our hearing is so stinking big that I can't deal with a million. I just don't want to deal with it. Look, I don't want to say that Nicole's hearing is 386,412 and Shabana's hearing is 916,409. It's just, there's way too many numbers. I like Mozart, but too many notes. I don't want to deal with that kind of crap. The loudest sound people can tolerate is a million times the softest that they can hear. Well, I don't want to deal with millions. I don't even want to deal with trillions. That's even worse. So we throw power out and pressure is good, but we have to have a system where we can shrink a million to one down into a manageable number. And we've done that with logarithms. So now I can say Nicole has a 50 decibel hearing loss and Shabana has a 30 decibel hearing loss and Ted has a 70 decibel hearing loss. So that, those are numbers that I can handle, okay? And that is what 
we are doing with the decibel. The decibel is a system based on logarithms. Okay, that's what it is. So now we go to sharing screen and talk about our notes. All right. Hit escape there, go to our notes and read the bottom of the page. The range of human hearing for intensity is huge, so we use a ratio system based on logarithms. I'm just reading what we said. The decibel is a unit based on logarithms used to define ratios between powers or pressures or anything. And it's named, believe it or not, after Alexander Graham Bell, who discovered the telephone. Okay, he was trying to discover hearing aids. He had hearing loss in his family. He was trying to invent hearing aids. Okay, and he accidentally stumbled on the telephone. Now, Americans say he did this in Boston. Canadians say he did it in Brantford, Ontario. Okay, because he lived on both sides of the border. He was a Scotsman from Scotland, you know, but he lived in Canada and in the United States and he did his experimental work on both sides of the border. Anyway, decibels, deci is a tenth, D-E-C-I, a tenth of a bell, okay? Decibels is based on logarithms because they compress a huge range of numbers into a smaller range. Ratios always compare something to something else, just like I told you about the house. I said the, ho the apartment is twice as tall as the house. And to do that, you needed to know what the ground is. Well, what's the ground? Zero decibels SPL. And what's zero decibels SPL stand for? Sound pressure level. And what is the softest pressure against the eardrum required? 0 0.0002 dynes per centimeter squared. What's the largest we can tolerate? 200 dynes per centimeter squared. How much bigger is that from the softest? A million. Do I want to deal with a million? Heck no. So I'm going to use logarithms to shrink a million into from zero to 120. Cool. Now we can do hearing tests. And that's how hearing tests are done in decibels from zero to 120. Told you. You got to know what the decibel is in order to do become an HIS because you're going to be dealing with Hertz. Hertz, I should say, H, Z, and decibels, little d, big B, for the rest of your careers. And if you're dealing with Hertz and decibels, you have to know what they are. So you spent the last couple of weeks learning what Hertz is. Now, now you are learning what the decibel is. So I think we're making great progress here. Let's look at our screen and move on down. Oh, da -dee -da -dee -da -dee. Yeah, this is just yeah, 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 whatever. Power equals pressure squared. Put a star by that puppy, okay? What is something when it's squared? What, is, what does that mean? Well, two times two is four. Two squared is four. Three times three is nine. Three squared is nine, okay? Now, power equals pressure squared. What does that mean in English? A million times a million is a trillion. Ha! All right. Note the trillion increments for power or watts and the million increments for pressure. It's not that the range got bigger because no, it did not. Okay. Nothing got bigger about the range. Look at the two thermometers. Freezing is freezing is freezing. Boiling is boiling is boiling. My point is there's two systems used to measure intensity of sound in decibels. One's power, one's pressure. We choose pressure because the ear works more like a pressure device. Good. All right, move to the top of page two. Now here's something that's just kind of like, well, this is a little bit different. So I'll just stop here. This is kind of like our coffee break in a way. And I'll describe this in plain English first, and then we'll look at our notes. Okay? <sighs> Lots of people watched the Super Bowl game this past weekend. Lots of people watched the Patriots lose and the Eagles win. Good. All right. I was looking for a change myself. Okay? So 
when you're looking at football uniforms, they often have numbers on them, don't they? This player is number five, this player is number 16. Those numbers are just names. So we're gonna talk about four ways to assign numbers to things. The first way is called nominal. And think of football jerseys, okay? The sweater they're wearing, what number? is Brady? What number is so-and-so? What number is, and that, that doesn't mean anything. It's just the number they chose to be called, okay? Like in hockey in Canada, you know, the best player we ever had was Wayne Gretzky. What was his number? 99. Why? He's not 99 years old. He just chose 99. He liked the look of that number, okay? It's like me calling Nicole number six and Shabana number three. Doesn't mean anything. Just, just, not, just, naming, just naming with numbers. Now, the second way builds on that okay the second way says i'm not just going to name with the numbers i'm going to order with the numbers in terms of tallest or in terms of weight or in terms of the grade they got or which horse came in first was it horse number one or horse number two okay and that's called ordinal so the first way you can assign numbers is just naming nominal the second way you can assign numbers is called ordinal. That means you're not only naming, but you're ordering, you're ranking. Now, be very careful about ranking because ranking just says one, two, and three, and four. But ranking doesn't tell you much past that. In other words, if I use false advertisements, I can say, hey, we're the th third largest bank in America. Oh, yeah, well, bank number one is huge, bank number two is huge, and bank number three is way back here. Or the horse was third to come in. Maybe the first horse and the second horse were at the, at the finish line just about neck and neck, and the third horse was a whole lap behind. Yeah, but he came in third. Yeah, but he was a whole lap behind. I mean, good grief, okay? That's where we come to the third way of naming things. Not only are we using a number to name something, not only are we ordering, but now we're making the distance between each item the same. It's like one inch, two inches, three inches, four inches, okay, an inch is an inch to have a pinch, okay? So now we're saying, hey, not only are we naming, not only are we ranking, but we're now we're making each item equally distant from each other like temperature on a thermometer from 32 to 33 to 34 to 35 degrees. Each degree is equal. They're equal in size. And this, people, is where you and I as HISs are going to be using satisfaction questionnaires with hearing aids. How happy are you with your hearing aids at the supper table? How happy are you with your hearing aids when at church? How happy are your hearing aids how, when you're walking outside and there's traffic noise? <laughs> Those are called questionnaires. And put your answer down on from one to five, with one being real happy, three being so-so, and five being awful. Well, what are you doing? You're taking emotions and you're mapping them on an interval scale. Nominal, you're naming. Ordinal, you're ordering ranking, but interval, uh -uh, now you're saying there's equal intervals between each item. And that's what you're doing with questionnaires. Because one is to two, is to three, and four, and five. On a scale of one to five, how do you feel about X, Y, and Z? Oh, so you're taking emotions, and you're making, you're mapping them onto numbers. And the numbers are equally distant from each other. Do you understand that? When you can do that, you can do statistics. And that's why governments always want satisfaction scales. That's why anything, even your feelings about OTC and student class evaluations are done with numerical scales. And those numerical scales are meant to put the numbers evenly apart, because when you can do that, you can crunch statistics. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, let's get to the fourth 
numerical measurement. That not only says your naming, that not only says your ranking in, according to some dimension, that not only says your equal intervals between each item ranked, uh -uh, this one says you've not only done that, you've also defined what the ground is. And that's like the decibel. It's called the ratio scale. It's the most difficult numerical assignment of numbers to things, the ratio scale. So in other words, if, look at it this way. Temperature is on an interval scale. If I say it's 60 degrees or else it's 30 degrees, okay, is 60 degrees really twice as warm as 30? Is 10 degrees really twice as warm as 5 degrees? Not really. 10 degrees is 5 degrees more than 5 degrees, but 10 degrees isn't twice as warm as 5 degrees. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so the decibel is based on ratios, and the ratio we had to define what a ground was. We had to define what zero was, because once you've done that, you can say the apartment is twice as tall as the house. So the, that's, uh, this is all a way to tell you that all of this morning, as you're wrapping your brain around all these weird things I'm talking about, just look at yourselves in the mirror and say, you know what? No wonder. The decibel is based on a complex numerical system. It's not only nominal, you're not only ordering, you're not only with a ratio interval, having equal distances among things, but you're also defining what the ground. All right, all that to say is when we share screen and look at our notes now, that's what you're seeing at the top of the page here. Four ways to assign numbers to things, right there. And I went over each one of those things. And especially look at interval here. They show rank, but also equal intervals, like a ruler. For example, temperature. A change of five degrees is five degrees anywhere on the, on the thermometer, but you can't say 10 degrees is two times as warm as five degrees. An increase of one degree near zero is the same amount of an increase as one degree added to 35 degrees or 95, okay? The racial scale here has all the above properties, plus now the numbers are in a fixed ratio to each other. They can describe relations among items. They need a reference point, and that reference point is 0 dB SPL. And what is that in pressure? 0 0.0002 dynes per centimeter squared. This here in your notes is the same thing as what's his name what in, in your text covered here. I'll just show you when you're going to, where is it? Not that one. This Okay, that's all. This, when you're reading your notes, your book, you'll see this written. In my notes, I just wrote it like this. Same thing, okay? Now, here's where I want you to not freak. Look at as you move down the page, you're going to be going, oh my God, did I come into the wrong field? No, you didn't. This, you really don't need to know this. This is, I put this in there for the nerds among us, and not everyone's a nerd, but some people are nerds, and they want to know why is it that when you increase your pressure by 10, how come you go up by 20? Why the 20? Where's this 20 from? How did they get that 20? Okay, so if people were wanting to know that, they could read this, what I've grayed out. Okay, I'm never going to ask you to do that. So just leave that alone and tell yourself FNO, freak not out, okay, or for nerds only. What I do want you to know is the top two lines right there. That's what I want you to know. And that's how we're going to stop for today is right there. We need to know the formula. DBSPL. Okay, what if you're trying to find some decibel amount and you're trying to find that decibel amount from some pressure? Okay, so there's your formula. It's got three pieces to it. And we'll start at the left. Okay, the first part is some 
sound pressure, right where I'm highlighting here, some sound pressure. So that sound pressure, people, could be 0.2, could be 0.2, could be 2 point, could be anything, okay? So you're taking some sound pressure, we'll call that X, whatever that is, and look where the line underneath that over the reference. And there's your ground. That's your ground. That's the denominator. That always stays the same. It's always 0 0.0002. That doesn't change. In order to say the apartment is twice as tall as the house, you need to know what the ground is. And last time I looked, the ground is the ground. Okay, so there you go. That bottom number never changes. But the top one might. It might be 2 point. It might be 0 0.2. It might be whatever. So that's the ratio. So you first do that. And then what's the logarithm of that ratio? Now, this is not Chinese. This is English. We'll talk about it. Okay. And then you multiply it by 20 to get your decibels. So let's do one together just for the Sam Hill of it. Okay. Here's, look what it says. First do the ratio, then do the log of the ratio, then multiply by 20. One, two, Three, so here's an example. There's two examples. Let's say your pressure was 0 0.002 dynes per centimeter squared. Right here, right where I'm highlighting, right here. Let's say that was your pressure. Here's the ground. Okay, so 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.0002. Get your calculator out. And what is that? So I'll take my calculator and just do that. 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.0002. And what does that equal? 10. Okay. That equals 10. What's the logarithm of 10? Well, what is that in English? What does, what does that mean? Logarithms means how many times does 10 have to be multiplied by 10 in order to equal something? So when you're figuring out the log of 10, it's 1. How many times does 10 have to be multiplied by 10 to equal 10? 1 times 10 is 10. 10 times 1 is 10. Okay? So, what's 20 times 1? 20. So, there's your decibels. Let's look at it here. If this was my number, if this was my pressure, what was my decibels? 20. Let's do another example here. Then we'll bag it. Okay? Get out of here. Go over to here, hit this, uh, look at here, here's another one. For example, let's say my pressure was 0 0.02. So let's look at 0 0.02, right there. So once again, the bottom number is always the same, that's the ground. So what's 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.0002? Get my calculator, 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.0002 equals 100. Okay, what's the logarithm of 100? Well, how many times did 10 have to be multiplied by 10 to equal 100? I'm going to stop sharing here. 10 times 10 is 100. So the logarithm there of 100 is 2. How many times did 10 have to be multiplied by 10 to equal 100? The logarithm of, of, the logarithm of 100 is 2. So now, what's... Okay, so now let's 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 share screen here. All right, the logarithm of 100 is 2. 20 times 2 is 40. So let's look at our picture. If this was our number, 0 0.02 in that example, yep, what was the decibels? 40. Okay, so 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.002 is 100. What's the logarithm of 100? 2. What's 20 times 2? 40. Done. So that is as much as I'm ever going to ask in the decibel in terms of formulas. That's it. Want to do a third example? Let's look at it. Okay? Let's figure out what if the number was 2. Let's figure it. Let's pretend our pressure was 2. Let's look at this pressure right here. Okay? Let's think of a, about that one. 2. 
Okay, what's our formula? Look at the top here. Some sound pressure over 0 0.0002. So what's 2 divided by 0 0.0002? Get the calculator out. 2 divided by 0 0.0002 equals 10,000. Now, I, I know you're not going to see my, because my calculator sucks, so I can't show it to you, but just believe me, it's, it's 10,000. Okay, what's the logarithm of 10,000? Well, how many times does 10 have to be multiplied by 10 to equal 10,000? Let's do that. 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000, times 10 is 10,000. Hmm. There you go, logarithm of 10,000 is 4. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So the logarithm of 1,000 is 4. What's 20 times 4? 80. So let's look at our picture here. Share screen, have a look. Picture and PowerPoint. We chose 2 as our number. Go up, 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 and left, 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 left. You are at 80. Told you. Okay, that's what I mean. The formula's got three parts. First, figure the ratio, then figure out the logarithm of the ratio, then multiply it by 20. That will give you your decibels. And why do we do all of this? Because the range of our hearing is so stinking big that we can't sit there dealing with zero up to a million. I don't want to deal with all those numbers. We want to have a way to shrink that million into from 0 to 120. And that's what the audiograms, when you're learning audiometry next semester and you're looking at hearing tests, you're going to see on the top 0 and 120. And that's, why, that's how we came up with this stuff. All right. I think that's enough for today. I think I'm going to have a coffee. Maybe I'll put some Baileys in it. Nah, it's too early in the morning. <laughs> All right. Good enough. Good stuff. And uh, Shabana, I've uh, had a couple of emails from you, and I will e answer you back in your anatomy one. But why don't we just talk about that for a second here? I mean, talk about the formulas. In the frequency stuff, okay, you had two basic formulas. Two basic. One was F is 1 over P, and P is 1 over F. And you're doing those, that, that little twin set of formulas, to figure out what the period was. What's the time it took for one cycle? Or if you had the time, how do you find the frequency? If you have the frequency, how do you find the time? So F is 1 over period. Period is 1 over frequency. Okay, that's that set. The second set is... You're not looking interested in the time it takes to complete one cycle. Now you're trying to find out the physical length of the wave. Is it four feet long? Is it one inch long? What's the length of it? And for that, you're I got an itchy nose. For that, you're always using speed of sound. Wavelength equals speed of sound over the frequency. Okay, what's the speed of sound? 340 meters per second. If the frequency was 500, well, what's 340 divided by 500? I'll get my calculator. 340 divided by 500 equals 0.68 meters. 0.68 meters. That's the length of the wave. I didn't make it up. That's what it is. Okay? If you want to do it in feet, what's the speed of sound in air? in feet, 1130 feet per second. Okay, you have a 500 hertz tone. Speed of sound, 1130 feet per second. Let's do the math. 1130 feet per second divided by 500 equals 2.26 feet. 2.26 feet. Wavelength is speed of sound over the frequency. Whether you do that speed of sound in air or whether you do it in feet is, or in meters or in feet is up to you. But I'll tell you something. Science always prefers metric. Sorry. The United States and England are the only people in the world still using feet. Everyone else has gone to meters and centimeters and kilometers. So as soon as you get into Canada, you'll never see 60 mile an hour. Uh -uh. It's always 100 kilometers an hour. That's the speed limit on the highway. 100. 
It might be 110, might be 120, but that's the top. Just like in the States, it'll be 70 miles an hour might be the fastest you're allowed to go on the interstate, you know. But we've jettisoned <laughs> all of that a long time ago. But I, I got brought up in feet and, and pounds and everything too, so I know both of them. But science uses metric, and all science does. Whether you're in the United States or in Canada, they all use metrics. So as soon as you go into physics or chemistry or biology, all the textbooks are talking metric. Just FYI, I thought I'd tell you that. All right, good enough. I've wasted my, more of your time. Good stuff. I'll I have one question. What's that? Um, whenever we get our quizzes back, could we go over a few, like whatever I might have wrong? What I always do is when I grade the quizzes, I always make comments on them. Mm -hmm. I always write the answer, and then sometimes I write how come. So that's, that's what that, I want to know is how come. <laughs> yeah, that's what, of course. That's what, so when you look at my grade, at your graded quizzes, you will see my comments on them. So I, I put the correct answer if you got it wrong, and then I put how I got that. Okay? okay. Good stuff. Okay. All right. I'll stop recording and grab a coffee. Cheers. See you later.